Praise God. If it wasn't that lighthouse, buddy, where would this ship be? I'd be in hell probably or on my way. That's for sure. Amen. All right, take your Bibles this, this morning. Open up to the book of 1 Corinthians, uh, chapter number 8. And here we go. It's that time of year again. And hard to believe we're already coming down to the end, end of this year. And um, Christmas has always been a big part of my life, all my, all my whole life. And uh, still is. I enjoy this time of year. And I'm going to try to help you this morning uh, to start off the Christmas season right and get a, a, a biblical view of Christmas. This is not something I haven't gone over with many of y'all before, but so some of you would be repetitious, but there's a, probably 50, 60 people in here this morning that have never heard a real Bible view of Christmas. Uh, we as Christians are supposed to view everything through the lens of the Scripture. And then uh, it's okay to have an opinion as long as it's not against Scripture. Uh, so uh, let's, uh, let's do that this morning. We'll look in 1 Corinthians chapter number 8 and look at verse number 5. Look at verse number 5. For though, uh, though there be many that are called gods, whether in heaven or on earth, as there be gods many and lords many, but to us there is but one God, the Father, of whom are all things, and in Him, and one Lord Jesus Christ, by whom all things, and we by Him. So it don't matter what the world says or thinks, to us we know there's only one God. And everything starts and finishes in Him. Now look at chapter 9, the next chapter over, and uh, look over there at 25. Verse number 25. Verse 25. And every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate. See that word temperate? That's a very important word in Christian life. In all things. We do it for corruptible crown. We do it for an incredible. Temperate means uh, taking your time, modest, balanced, even. Temperate means not going overboard, uh, having a balanced view. So I want to talk this morning about a biblical view of Christmas. My goodness, these kids, these kids done gone, gone crazy and wild, and wanting presents, and wanting presents. And I, and I, and I always, I always think about. I, it is not part of my message, but I can't, I can't help but think about the story I told you about uh, the kids who were optimists and pessimists. You know, an optimist, somebody always tries to see the good side of things. A pessimist always sees the negative or the bad side of things, and you got to have a little bit of both. You can't be too much of either one of those. Like negative and positive on your battery, your car won't run if you don't have both up. So uh, you got to have negative and positive. But uh, I had this guy telling his friend he, he had two boys. He said, now one of my boys is an optimist. He said, it don't matter what you give him, what you do for him. He's happy. He's content. He enjoys it. He said, I've got another one. It don't matter what it is. He finds something wrong. He'll find some fault with it. You can buy him anything, give him anything, take him anywhere. He got something bad to say about it, everything. So he said, I'll prove it. So at Christmas time, they both got their gifts. The first boy, who was the, who was the pessimist, uh, opened a big old gift, about as big as this uh, speaker right here. And he opened that thing, and it was an electric train set. And boy, he, he started turning into that thing, and immediately he said, this don't look like the one I saw at the mall. And they started putting it together and said, the track seemed like it don't fit right. And they kept messing with it, messing with it, messing with it, messing with it. And he said, those cars are not as real as the ones we saw at the store the other day, Dad. And then they finally got it running. He said, it's too slow. I, I just don't like it. Can we maybe take it back and trade it for the other one? And obviously the daddy got, you know, he was upset. The kid doesn't like that. And he said, how about the other boy? So he got the other boys present out, and he, the, the, the optimist, and he opened up his gift, and whoo, everybody had to leave, everybody had to leave out of the room. It was a big pile of horse manure, and it stank. Well, I said, shoot, Lord, he went, yes, oh, I, oh, man, this is great, this is great. He ran over here, and he ran over there, and they said, man, 
What in the world is wrong with you? He said, are you lost your mind? Look what you've got in your gift. He said, i got a pony around here somewhere if I can find it. <laughs> See, there's your optimist. There's your optimist. Now, you'll notice that there's some people, you can't make them happy. Amen. And there's others, they're going to be happy whether they get anything for Christmas or not. And so, let's, let's look at what a biblical view of Christmas is. Give me your attention. Uh, put your phone down yeah, and your brain on for a change. Uh, look at this. Listen to what I'm saying. We're there again. The battle is raging, as always, over Christmas. You got these woke, liberal, God-hating uh, people on TV of the left-wing news media that despise everything that has anything to do giving Jesus Christ any kind of recognition, praise, or honor at all. Uh, and they're, they're like every year. It's a war on Christmas. They don't mind Halloween, uh, but they hate Christmas. And the reason they do is because the spirit that's inside them instinctively is jealous of Jesus Christ. That's a problem. It shouldn't bother them when somebody celebrates Christmas, but they can't stand for him to get any kind of glory. They are the college brainwashed, sin-led people who are jealous of the power of the Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, we, we, we don't fool them. They, they don't know what they're talking about. Um, they, uh, they're just um, hypocrites. The people who talk about tolerance are the most intolerant people in the world. And uh, you understand that if you've got, you got a whole lot of sense. And we battle with them every, every single year. And you know, the joke's on them, really, because they, they, they don't want you to say Christmas. I seen where one big major department store was not allowing the colors of green and red. That's getting bad, ain't it? Uh, you're not allowed to put any green and red in the apartment store. What in the world has that got to do with Jesus the Bible? Nothing. But it might make people think of the major, and then they might think the Bible's true. We can't have that. And so they didn't didn't want it at all. They, they did not want it at all. It was just, it was just horrible. They just, uh, just, they just had a heart attack and uh, just, just jealous of it. And won't let you say Christmas. But then them same nuts showing their lack of education. They just say happy holidays. Happy holidays. And you know what holiday means, don't you? Holy day. Holy day. Uh-oh. They done said the day was holy. Oh, the news media done said the day was holy. Bless their little ignorant hearts. Uh, they don't even understand uh, what they're talking about. So you can't get around him. You can't get over him. You can't get above him. Uh, you have to deal with Jesus Christ. That's all they are to it. Put it in your hat and, and put that in your hat and take it with you. Now, this morning, there's just a little quick advice that I'd like to pass on to you this morning. And as you hear me say, every year as a Christian family, and all you new converts, listen carefully. Number one, one thing you have to do about this Christmas thing is learn how to stay balanced. You stay balanced. You can go overboard one way or the other. Some people go overboard. It's just Christmas, everything Christmas, everything Christmas, everything Christmas. The whole world has I lay out of church, won't go to church because of Christmas, and they'll go to church and then overboard on Christmas. And then the other group of Christians, see, some Christians get so right with God at Christmas, they don't even go to church. And uh, they're backslid. And then other Christians get self righteous and say, we don't have no kind. We don't honor Christmas. We won't mention Christmas in this house. And their kids run around saying, Daddy, why, 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 why? Hush! It's a pagan holiday. We don't do it. You're not getting a, We're not honoring the devil and all that. And both of those groups are extreme nuts. I hate to say that. Uh, but uh, uh, I don't mean that bad. But let's, we as Christians go by what the Bible says. You would be surprised if you don't believe it. This sermon that I'm preaching right now, yeah, right now, biblical view of Christmas. Look it up on, on YouTube by the end of this week, and somebody out there listening, they're listening to me all over the world right now. Uh, they're in the UK and Africa and different countries and all over the United States. Somebody will write in and they'll say, Danny Castle, I thought you was a good preacher. I cannot believe you've got that pagan symbol of a wreath hanging in your church. 
Don't you under, I, I never would have thought of you. That's what I get for believing in somebody. I'd have never believed uh, uh, that you'd allow something like that to happen. Now, a person like that has read too many articles and not enough Bible. That's a problem. Amen. The articles ain't the final authority. The Bible is. When I just said, uh, when it says, where does the Bible authorize Christmas decoration? Well, it's right next to that verse that authorizes you to have the internet. You not? You not? Uh, the Bible. If if I want, and I got a tree. We got a tree in our living room uh, like this, and it's got lights on it year round, not just at in in December. Lights on a tree are not pagan. Amen. Red flowers are not pagan. When I said I refuse to even say the word Christmas because it's Christ, Chris, mass, a mass in honor of Christ. That's how they named it like that. And he said, I don't know say that word. We don't even acknowledge that in our, in our, it's, it's a pagan holiday. It started out. We know that. Uh, Jesus wasn't born on December 25th. We know that also. Uh, we know they, they think we're dumb, I guess. And they say, I cannot believe you going along. And, and you know, here, here's the problem with that. Did you know that all the days of the week are named after pagan deities and false gods? Sunday, today, it's to honor the sun, sun worshiper. So if you say it's Sunday, you are a pagan, according to that philosophy that them people are trying to cram down our throat. Monday, moon day. That's where the name Monday come from. They worship the moon. Tuesday honors the Roman god of Mars. Wednesday honors the Woden chief deity of North mythology. Thursday, Thor, the god Thor, Thor, Thor's day, Thursday. Friday, honors the Norak god of, uh, uh, of the, the heathen. And Saturday, honors the god Saturn. You say, every one of them are pagan names, brother Danny. That's right. Well, what are we going to call it? I'm going to call it Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Because I'm not honoring a pagan god. Now, if you believe that's pagan, you should say the first day of the week, second day of the week, third day of the week, fourth day of the week to be consistent or shut up about Christmas. And then you talk about pagan. Um, I think if you've got a TV, a TV's way more pagan uh, than a pine cone with snow on it. I think you, sir, are a hypocrite, really, is what you are. You found out a couple of truths, and you think you're smarter than everybody else, and uh, there is nothing against giving it up. One man said there, there's nothing in the Bible said to celebrate Jesus' birthday. There's nothing in the Bible said you can't, neither. If we want to shout every day because he's born in a manger, we'll do it. Ain't nothing in the Bible says we can't worship Jesus on his birthday. And it ain't birthday, but you know what I mean. Mary, having a very good night, people. Uh, uh, come off that high horse. Uh, stay balanced. Stay balanced. You want to put lights on your tree in the middle of July and have a Christmas program? That's fine. Ain't nothing wrong with that. As long as you don't go against Scripture. You said, where do we draw the line? Santa Claus. There are the lines drawn. You say, why do you draw the line there? Because it's a lie. Ooh, I done made some of you mad there, didn't I? You know who gets mad at me every year for that? Parents. You know, if you tell your, your kids that there's this big fat man that flies through the air and goes to everybody in the world's house in one night and bring them good, you're, you're, you're lying, friend. That ain't true. That ain't true. That ain't true. See, I got it over with for you now. You don't have to worry about telling them. Oh, I've been waiting on the right time to tell them, Brother Danny. They're 11 years old. Yeah. <laughs> well, anyway, uh, you got to stay balanced. Amen. 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 That's right. You got to stay balanced. Quickly, quickly, I'll move on this morning. I'd be like, you know, oh, I said one time, well, see, if you have that tree right there, that represents something in pagan mythology. It don't matter what they did in pagan times. That's got nothing to do with us now and a tree like that right there. You know an example? If I brought a rainbow sign in here next week, and I might, and put it around up there, there would be people right in and say, oh, he's worse than I thought. <laughs> he's done gone gay. I, I, oh my goodness, I would have never believed it. That old-fashioned Bible preacher, listen, that's because you watch too much TV and don't read enough Bible. 
The rainbow sign don't mean nothing about being gay. The rainbow is God's Bible in Genesis 9. God invented it and put it up in the sky as a reminder to the world that He never breaks a promise and the world ain't going to be flooded again. But your lack of education and your intolerant, self-righteous, judgmental spirit makes you think backwards. I don't want a rainbow shirt. I'll do it. You know what? So, oh, Brother Danny, you're wicked. No, I'm honoring God's promises. You see how mixed up we are? The devil, he'll, he'll trick you in all kinds of ways like it. Well, anyway, I'll get off on all that. Uh, uh, let me say secondly, here's just some good Christmas advice. You ready? You'll thank me for this. Don't overspend. Don't overspend. If you want to get miserable and mad and backslid and get in a fight two days after Christmas, go out and buy a bunch of stuff you can't afford. Did you know that the average American now owes almost $20,000 in debt to credit cards? Uh, to credit cards. Cards, plural. Not just the credit card to have to do what you have to pay a card. They'll have a Belts card. And they'll have a TJ Maxx card. And they'll have a, 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 a this card. And this card goes to... Uh, to pennies and this card's for Dillard's and this card's for uh, that and I'll just put that on my card and I'm going to tell you something there's something side psychological I have a credit card and the only time I use it is when I have to and I lay it down and do whatever you got to do to have to pay for it with and then it's the end of the month where I write a check and pay it off every bit of it that's the only way you can use a credit card look you know what I was somewhere one day and I was getting something I forgot what it was and uh, the lady said, I, I pulled out money out of my pocket and, and I was getting ready to pay for it. And she said, we don't take cash. We don't take cash. And I said, well, how, how you, what do you want me to do? She said, we don't we won't take cash. And I said, okay, I, I do have a credit card. So I pulled my Visa card out. And for a second, here's what it felt like. Oh, I don't have to pay for it. Because I put my money back in my pocket and laid that card down. Yeah. Now, whether you realize it or not, it's so easy to lay that card down because you sub, subconsciously you feel like, this is, don't have to pay for this. <laughs> Guess what? You do have to pay for it. Plus a bunch. Plus a bunch. I mean, you got $10,000 on a credit card and you keep paying it. They go up to, I, last time I checked, like 18% interest or whatever. And then it keeps compounding. And then you get behind. You'll wind, if you owe $10,000, you pay, wind up paying twenty five. dollars and don't overspend. Don't overspend. The average American goes overboard. Years ago, you've heard me say, when my girls was all little, uh, when my daughters were little, I would, uh, I, I wanted to give them something for Christmas because you don't want your kids to feel like they got cheated or they left out. Please don't feel like that. Don't don't feel like well the neighbors' kids they're all getting an Xbox and they're all getting this and they're all, and I, and I just, so I'm just gonna go borrow the money. I'll I'll worry about it now. I, you know I did that. I did that. I'd either borrow money or I let my house payment go. I let the house payment go in December and took my money because back then you you just lived. You, you made just enough money to pay your bills. And I thought, I'll let my house payment go, and I'll buy them Christmas, and I'll just catch up in January. And that never works. It never works. When January comes, it's the coldest month of the year about it, and your heat, your heat is double, your electric bill goes up, and then you get sick, and then it's, it snows, and you have to miss work and school, and it ain't January, it ain't February, it ain't March. It's April before you get caught back up. It's not worth it. And if you are married to a man that works hard and tries to do right, or you have a wife that works hard and tries to do right, and your other relatives are better financially off than you are, don't put pressure on that man to say, well, all my sisters, and they're all buying this and that, and so you should too. Let the man do the best he can and thank God for it. Don't try to keep up with the rest of your family that make more money than you do. That's not what Christmas is supposed to be about. Amen? Get modest gifts from the flea market. That's where I go. <laughs> 
Nothing wrong with that. Some of that stuff you never know the difference. Listen, these tools, brother, they got boots and and and, and gloves and everything in the world of that. You know, when you when you go to the mall, you're paying for the clothes and the rocks and the water squirting up and the security guard and his salary. You're paying for all that. When you go to the flea market, you're just paying for fresh air in that table. It looks way worse than that right there. And some old redneck put gas in his truck. That's right. Uh, go where the discounts are. Uh, or go go somewhere. But anyway, don't overspend. Make up your mind. We're not going to do it. We're going to live within our budget. You know, more marriage troubles come from in-laws, money, stuff like that, than about any other thing. Live within your budget. If you have uh, $500, say, we're not going to spend but $500. We're not going to go get 900 and put four on the credit card uh, because you, you have to pay for it anyway. Uh, so, so go ahead and do that. Don't overspend. The old Mariah Carey, you know, she comes down and says, all I want for Christmas, it, that ain't, that's a lie. She says, all I want for Christmas is you. You know what she got? You know what, she, you know what she got? She's singing that song. A $400,000 car, a Rolls Royce from Nick Cannon. All I, yeah, whatever you little brat. All I want for, no, no, that ain't true. Uh, don't you listen to them people. Uh, old Paris Hilton went and bought herself a few years ago a pink, pink Bentley. $285,000. Bought it for herself. That's a real sweetheart, ain't it? I'm telling you, don't overspend. Don't overspend. Stay within your budget. And finally, this will be last. Listen carefully. Honor the Lord. Honor the Lord. Don't go crazy. Don't go say, we're going to go see the lights in here, and we're going to McCaddenville, and then we're going down there to Clampton, and then we're going to Dollywood, and then we're going to go another, and lead God out, and don't visit, and don't pray, and lay out of church, and everything else. Don't do it. Don't do it. Honor the Lord. All that stuff's okay, but it'll be gone in a few weeks. Life settled back down to normal. You still got your sickness. These people still got cancer. Your kids are still out of the will of God. Your daddy's still lost. Your mama's still out in sin. Uh, all that reality is going to hit back in just a few weeks. I will refuse to let myself get so wrapped up in Christmas that I'm going to spend time in the Bible and living for God and serving the Lord. Let me give you a good, let me give you a good idea right here. Right here. Good idea. Good idea for everybody. Let your kids, especially you that have kids, who are not in Christian school or homeschool. The Christian school kids and homeschool kids have a huge advantage over public schools. Huge. Let them hear. It, it dawned on me the other day. Our bus kids don't even know what, what silent, don't know silent night. Now us, we grew up hearing songs like that. They sung that stuff in school when I was a kid. Public school. We'd have a Christmas play and sing. Silent night, holy night. I've been letting, let in your car, in your house, have old fashioned, not this modern day contemporary Christmas 24 that had, had Eminem and had Jason Aldean and had, and, and had Madonna or something. Let them, let them feel the Spirit of God. Way in a manger, no crib for his bed. The little Lord Jesus laid down his sweet head. The stars of the sky looked down where he lay. The little Lord Jesus sleep on the hay. Let them hear that. I've been letting Frankie hear them songs. Me and him. Let them hear that. Put that in your car. Old time stuff. The hymns. Hark the herald angels sing. Glory to the newborn king. What's wrong with that, brother? It came upon a midnight clear. God rest you merry gentlemen. Joy to the world. The Lord has come. Let earth receive her king. How about that? They need, listen, did you know them songs can change the atmosphere in your home? You went home there and they got it on TV and got one of them fireplaces there. Snowflakes, snow scene. Away in a manger. It'll get in your kids. I've been, I've been, me and Frankie, I teach him songs. And I've been teaching him that little song. Don't laugh at me. I know I'm an old person. But man, 
I get down, I say, I said the donkey, shaggy and brown. I carried his mother uphill and down. I took her to Bethlehem's town. I said the donkey, shaggy and brown. And his eyes got about that big. He said, he, I said, you like that something? He said, yeah. I said, I said the cow all white and red. I gave him my manger for a bed. Y'all don't know that song? Where in the world have y'all been? That's older than the hills. Kids grew up saying that. Look it up. And all the animals have a part. I said the sheep. What does it say, Carrie? Well, I said the sheep. What? Anyway, I gave him my wool for to cover his head. I said the sheep. All fuzzy and red, or whatever it is, and and it goes to all the animals, and that gets in them. That gets in them. I went around for days saying, "I said the donkey, shaggy and brown." He said, "Brother Danny, a man, you're you're just about that close to being crazy." Yeah, just leave me alone. <laughs> There's something inside me that never did grow up past fourteen. Leave me alone. I'm enjoying it. I enjoy my life. I you sit around and think too much, you make yourself miserable. I keep up with what's going on in the world. I'm going to talk about it tonight. But brother, I'm going to forget it for a little while and sing I'm a donkey shaggy and brown. And then, that gone it, I sung it to him, sung it to him, and then went to the flea market yesterday and in one of them stores, you would know it. I said, Santa baby, hurry down the chimney tonight. And I just heard it for 30 seconds. And I sung it the rest of the day. Sent the baby a 54 convertible room, light blue. I've been a good girl, sent the baby. And I thought, good night. I was out here trying to witness singing Santa Baby. <laughs> I said, I'm a preacher. I'm supposed to be a preacher going down the road singing Santa Baby. Hurry, tell her, I'm saying I've been a good girl. That's. that's that tells you the power of that music, y'all. It's just powerful. And I had to pray. I said, God, that, that ain't, I mean, that ain't satanic. But I want something, I want the donkey shaggy and brown. Amen. Honor the Lord, people. Don't, don't say we're going to, we're just going to stay and watch Christmas movies and watch some Netflix wicked filth, something or another. People cussing, taking God's name in vain, taking their clothes off. That don't honor the Lord. That ain't what Christmas time's for. You might have to go back 50 years to the little house on a prairie or something to find a good one, but there is such a thing. You know, I thought about, now I have that stupid song on my mind again. Young man, back in the, actually 50s and 60s grew up. His name was Lindsay. He grew up in a home out there in California. His daddy was a distant, uncaring, severe, mean man. And every year, he would get meaner during the holidays. He beat Lindsay. He cussed him. He put extra work on him during the holidays. And cussed him, treated him like a dog. This young man lived in fear. He said, I hate my daddy. My daddy's mean to me, especially on holidays. Flogged him. Verbal, called him names, insult, harsh. Demons come out of him at Christmas time. So this boy grew up and turned into a wicked, womanizing, liquor drinking, wicked man. And at 51 years old, December the 11th, I think it's been the late 80s, somewhere along in there. Maybe Lindsay sat down with a gun and he took this gun and he said, before I die, I'm going to watch this. And he watched that famous movie, White Christmas, that Bing Crosby starred in. Every year, I remember when I was a little kid, my mom go around singing White Christmas and Bing Crosby and every year it was like, it was like The Wizard of Oz. You know, they watched it every year. And he sat down and watched that. And he took a gun, pistol, and blew his brains out and fell over that table. The rest of the story is Lindsay's last name was Crosby. 
That was Bing Crosby's son. And while Hollywood, while he was entertaining Hollywood, and while he was out there at all the parties, and all the champagne, and all the expensive gifts, and the fancy cars, and the rings, and the diamonds, and everything, his home went to hell. He had two sons that committed suicide. Bing Crosby was a strong, dedicated Catholic. But he knew not, God knew nothing about the real truth. Beat his sons at Christmas. You know what that means? Just because a person acknowledges it being Christmas time don't mean nothing. Honor the Lord at Christmas. Best thing you can do at Christmas is just stay, spend some time with your family. Keep the house good and warm. Read the Bible. Teach those kids Bible verses, y'all. Teach them Bible verses. And that's a biblical. What I just gave you this morning is a biblical view of Christmas. Maybe you're here this morning. You say, Brother Danny, I'm not even saved. I'm not a Christian. I don't even know what, it, what Christmas really means. This would be a great time for you to get saved. Maybe you're here this morning. You've been saved. Come on, girls. And maybe you've been saved, but you're not right with God. And God brought you here. Jesus first. Let's all stand by our head in prayer, please. Let's all stand. Our heads are bowed. Our eyes are closed. Nobody's talking. Nobody's looking. Heads are bowed. Eyes are closed. Piano's playing softly. Just maybe. Just maybe. Just maybe. Maybe you're here this morning and say, Brother Danny, preacher, you know, I need to get the real meaning of Christmas back in my home, back in my life. I want to really enjoy Christmas this year. It starts right here at this altar. Getting your heart right with God. That's where it starts. Amen. Amen. We don't have a bus kid get right back there this morning. Others are coming right now. Come down here to pray. Amen. Amen. Let's put Jesus Christ. How many of you just say, I don't need all this morning, preacher. We're going to put Jesus Christ in my house this Christmas. Let's move right now. Father, do what ought to be done right now. Thank you, God, for this time of year. Lord, we know a lot of it's junk and a lot of it's wicked, filthy, and, and God-hating. But Lord, I, we are so thankful that the underlying truth is that you were born in a manger and you came and died for our sin. And Lord, you're coming back again to get us out of here. Hallelujah. I thank you, Lord, for that wonderful night that you came in this old world. Have your way in our hearts this evening, or this morning, tonight, as the days ahead during this Christmas season. Lord, help us to put you first. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Go ahead and sing. You come right now. Come on, right now. Amen. Amen. Let's just get around this altar this morning and say, Lord, you're first this year. Amen. Come on. Everything was planned just so. Come on, just get a seat. Come right now. Right now. Right now. This is your change. This is your change right now. I am going to put the Lord first a this Christmas. Every child was born the holy spotless. Yeah, man. That's right. Amen. God's own son became the son of man. Glory to God. Hallelujah. No room was found to lay his precious head. A cradle filled Amen. with hay. The journey so long, the stable was so long. Lord of God, that's right. On the night the heaven came to touch the earth below, for God so loved that he so gave his only begotten Son the world to save. Without him we were lost and Amen. without hope. Amen. The Ladies. greatest gift we can receive for every whosoever will believe. Yep. He came so ever last. Don't let that get old to you. Get no. that story in your head. Put it in your All kids' heart. because God loved us so. Amen. Amen. He understands the 
right. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. That's right. Amen. For God so loved Woo. that he so gave Glory his own begotten son the world to save. Without him we oh, were good. lost and without hope. Amen. Amen. The greatest gift oh, we can receive for every whosoever will believe. Amen. He came he so everlasting life we know, all because God loved us so. Amen. Some still praying over here. She's playing softly. Good time to get your heart right. It's still November, but I mean, we're in the Christmas season. And uh, Friday, I think, Thursday, Friday, first day, first day of December already. And uh, it's on. Christmas play will be on the on the seventeenth on Sunday evening. That's when we'll give the gifts for the bus kids. You want to be a part of all that. Be a part of helping with the bus kids Christmas. Everybody, just tell me what you give or bring. Put an envelope, something, and uh, we'll we'll grab, we're going to give them the money and let them go buy them a nice gift. Anybody who finds fault with that is a wicked person. What in the world could somebody find wrong with buying that little boy that I brought this morning by said? How can somebody be against that? Something ain't right in their head, buddy. Something ain't right. Amen. Amen. All right, now, so get this Christmas music. You, you can put in Christmas hymns. Don't put in Christmas music. Lord, you'll get rock around the clock and and, and Jay-Z and, and Beyonce and everybody else put in Christmas hymns and those, those hymns, they'll get the right spirit in your home and put it in your kids. Let them hear that little song. What's the name of that song, Carrie? That's what I was saying a minute ago. Huh? I saw the donkey. I said the donkey. I said the donkey. Is that the name of it? See, all the kids know it. That's what, that's what you, you're uneducated if you don't know that song. I said the donkey, shaggy and brown. I carried his mother uphill and down. See, the kids eat that up, man, because they like for animals, you know, <laughs> talk. All right. Donkey did talk in the Bible. Amen. But he said that, though. Uh, anyway, the, <laughs> the singing, <laughs> whatever. All right. We'll stop right there. Good Christmas song. All right, let's we'll, we'll be dismissed. Now, this evening, 6 o'clock, I'm going to be talking about prophecy again tonight. And we're living in a time of prophecy. So don't miss it. Bring your Bibles. All right. Amen. Brandon, dismiss some prayer, brother.